Hi, I'm Angie with Crawdaddy Magazine, and I'm here with Hot Tuna, Jack Cassidy, and Yorma Kakinen. Yorma K. So, uh, well done. Th- thanks. So, thank you. <laughs> thanks so much for sticking around after your session. Um, you guys at home, make sure you check that out. They just played a few acoustic songs for us here today at the vaults. Um, so, kind of just getting started, you guys have a really, really long friendship. When did you first meet and start playing music together? I know you're children. That's a good question. You know, it's, <laughs> I, I think we m- probably first met through my older brother, Charles Cassidy, who's a resident not far from here uh, in San Francisco. And I think it was just one of those after school things in, in, in junior high and high school where you hang out and, uh, and you meet. Well, there's some crucial stuff there. I mean, the chick, that's his older brother, he's a year older than me, so he had a driver's license before everybody else. So, of course, he was the most popular. And crucial, a car. yeah. So he was the most popular guy around. So we hung out with him a lot. And then uh, in the course of uh, driving in his 34 Ford and eating Mrs. Cassidy's roast beef sandwiches, uh, yes. we have- I met Jack and we discovered we had music in common. Yeah, I was playing guitar. Uh, I started at age 12. Uh, and this time, this was around 13 and a half, something like that. I think I met Yorma and hanging out. And we listening to records. And Yorma had an acoustic guitar, a J50, the famous Gibson J50. J45. J45, yes. Mm-hmm. And um, we, um, we started playing some songs together and, and, and songs of the day for Gene Vincent songs and Buddy Holly songs and, and Johnny Cash songs, stuff like that. Um, as a matter of fact, I think we just listened to Red Cadillac and Black Mustache the other day. That's right. And who sa- who did that song? I, I forgot. Who uh, did? I can't it? believe this. Bob Lumen. Bob Lumen. Yeah. Bob Lumen. Noted. And um, so we started uh, putting uh, some material together, like like you you want to do. And, and we got a drummer, uh, Warren Smith at the time, and then later on Ronnie McDonald, and we put a little band together. And this was back in D.C. Back when you were like. And this was when we were still in high school. I was in yeah. junior high. He was in high school. I remember our first gig, uh, I think we figured out how hard could it be, you know. <laughs> well, and considering how good we were at the time, it probably yeah. wasn't that hard. <laughs> but uh, our first gig was at uh, a Woodrow Wilson High sorority party. Yeah, I think, I think we probably, Charlotte Harbor. Uh, Charlotte yeah. Harbor, we probably only lost about $5 in that gig. Yeah, probably <laughs> only. But we did uh, our, 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 we, our first New Year's Eve gig. Were you, were you involved I was. in that? Yes. I believe that was... The yeah. sort of insane asylum that was in I don't David think there's and any Lisa. Sort of about it. Yeah, it, it, it was a, some sort of uh, insane asylum. They call them back in the day. It wasn't politically correct, but but they we got twenty five bucks a piece, and that was like I mean, with that was like big it, like oh, big absolutely. major bucks considering gasoline was nineteen cents a gallon. Good old days. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, ultimately, you both ended up on the West Coast in San Francisco as a part of the Jefferson Airplane. Um, you were the first one on board there, and then you brought Jack out to replace the existing first Thank space you, player. You're yeah. welcome, Jack. And you owe me big time, buddy. Yeah, don't I you absolutely. I always have. All you. I mean, the funny thing about that is we've, I've told the story a thousand times, but in our band, Jack played guitar. I played rhythm guitar and sang. And But he perceived that there was more work for bass players or whatever. In any case, he played bass, but I'd already left D.C., so I'd never really heard him play. But I just had a feeling he'd be good. I do remember when I picked him up at the airport, I think the first thing I said was, you better be able to play. Yeah. Like I vouched for you. He didn't let me down. Oh, nice. He picked me up in his convertible sunbeam at My the airport. Sunbeam. Yes. And you're like, this is California. <laughs> yeah. um, can you speak a little bit to being part of such a pioneering band and how that sort of shaped your musical directions and kind of well, where you were at the for, time? For me, it was it was really great. It was, it was an opening up. I, I tell my students now at... At the Fur Peace Ranch in Thank you, Southeast Ohio, the Yorma Calkin and Fur Peace Ranch, <laughs> that uh, that you know, there's a, a period of in your growth as a young musician where you've got to make a breakaway. You've got to break away from from uh, learning other people's material and and just mimicking other songs to to writing your own songs and and writing your own uh, uh, music. And that for me, that was coming out to. to to California to join the Jefferson Airplane because I had worked in a lot of R&B bands. Thank you, you are. You are. And uh, I worked in a lot of R&B bands and a lot of bands in, in the club circuit where you played five sets a night and you played other people's songs. And, and the club owners demanded that because that was, that was the nature of the business then. But uh, nobody wanted to hear it, your own stuff. So coming out to California, we were able to 
draw from all of our influences and 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 have an audience that would listen to you write your, uh, listen to the product that you would come out with you know listen to the songs that you'd work something on never heard with, before, with yeah. something they never heard before and have the patience to do that rather to come in like a toga party they want to sing along with whatever the latest song is and so that it was a big breakaway point for for everybody involved i think to uh, get the chance to do that and have a local audience that would be behind you to do it mm-hmm. and the thing is for me also when uh, paul cantor got me into the band I was really a, a, a folk solo guitar player most of the time. So the whole concept of band dynamics was a new thing to me. So it was a challenge to make it work. Mm-hmm. But thank God it did work. And <laughs> here we are. Yeah. I mean, that was such a pioneering sound yeah. and direction for anyone. Right. I mean, and that sounds great when, when you, a journalist, say, that was a pioneering sound. I go, well, yes, you know, we, uh, but it wasn't like that. That's just what we did. Right. <laughs> But uh, we have went with the times, yeah. I'm sure. So Hot Tuna was created in the late 60s um, as a it direct. Was, yeah. uh, to, you guys wanted to do some more bluesy material. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, that, that sort of implies an intellectual ascent of some sort, and I'm not sure we're really... <laughs> it was that conscious, yeah. <laughs> right. But uh, what happened was, uh, and, and again, I've told this story a number of times, but it really is true. Hard to imagine, but in those days, they didn't have TVs in hotel rooms. <laughs> Oh, they now, did, now, but now they we get upset work. if they don't have <laughs> right. a flat screen TV. But anyway, and and we also shared rooms a lot. So uh, in the beginning of uh, a lot of the airplane gigs, they they didn't go late like they did later on, and, and uh, we'd get back to the room, and I'd have my acoustic guitar, and he'd have his bass. We just started playing the folky stuff that I'd done before. Now a lot of people do that today. Uh, the the acoustic guitar. Uh, electric bass thing. A lot of people do it, but I have to say that I believe yeah. we were the first, as far as, as I know, to yeah. actually do that and uh, and make it and work. We alienated it, everybody. <laughs> I mean, it just started. It just yeah. started to happen, and then and then at one of the shows, I think Paul. Well, I forget where where it was. It might have been the Fillmore East or something. But Paul, went, why don't you guys play a song? With us. So we played something. I don't so know. We played something, journey, opening up to ourselves, so to speak, and 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 it yeah. sort of gained it gained a life of its own and. So it was um, done in parallel with Jefferson Airplane. In you the beginning, in the beginning, well. absolutely, yeah. yeah. And then, like I said, after all, it gained a lot of uh, momentum by itself, and then ultimately... Here we are, yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's still here. <laughs> so, um, you know, you guys do the acoustic hot tuna, which we saw today, as right. well as the electric hot tuna. Correct. Yeah, the electric had, not in the beginning, we didn't, we didn't really have that. And then we went through a lot of sort of interesting incarnations where sort of half of the airplane was part of electric hot tuna and a bunch exactly. of my friends that lived in Santa Cruz and this and that. My brother played with us for a while. And, and it just took really a while to, to find out where it was going. Mm-hmm. But it was always fun. I mean, you know, we just, here we are, let's play some songs. Yeah. So it seems like now, based on kind of the venue and the climate of the show, you guys kind of um, cater either one to. Well, it at. it usually depends on uh, when the gigs are set up with the agency. They're really usually booked as acoustic or electric. And yeah, I mean, if we're gonna, we did, we just did this Mountain Jam Festival in New York recently. I mean, I mean, something like that is absolutely an electric show. Because you, you want know? it to be loud. <laughs> yeah, not only is it an electric show. But we don't do the softer side of hot tuna songs either. I mean, you got to hit these people with a sledgehammer, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Which we can do, so that's okay. Kind of just going back a little bit, being here at the vaults, you know, we're kind of surrounded by all this memorabilia from the heyday of psychedelic rock. Do you have any Bill Graham stories that you'd like to share? Well, I, I guess the, one of the ones that comes to mind, we, we all, everybody's got a Bill Graham story. <laughs> but, but right up the street from the Fillmore, on Divisadero Street, used to be the Western Edition in those days, and I lived in this seedy little apartment. And, and uh, we used to, when we'd be working at the, at the Fillmore, uh, we would occasionally go back to the apartment just to sort of relax, a little recreational <laughs> uh, hiatus. And, uh, and one time we were coming back, we were supposed to play, and I didn't think we were late, but Bill did, and he was on the street just ranting. Being Bill, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. Runs We're lucky he didn't. Yes, he does. We're lucky he didn't kill us. The, the the vision was that he leapt out from the building and onto the car as a gargoyle, oh, you know, as we, as we as we drove up, uh, and uh, uh, and he he dressed us down right in public too. It's like right a horror in, you movie. Know. And uh, <laughs> it, you know he. Uh, but but scary, huh? but actually he was a, he was a good father figure in a way you know he looked out and he wrote he wrote letters to Yorma's parents about how he was doing and all yeah, this what kind a jerk of thing I you know was, yeah. and uh, uh, it was it was it was great you know he was a a really interesting fellow at the time I don't think we appreciated it 
uh, but a sense of responsibility was was legendary mm-hmm. uh, about responsibility to the the patrons that came to the place, responsibility to the to the venue, how it was how it was done. That's why he was everywhere at once. He was polishing the apples in front, and he was setting up the stage in the back all at the same time. He also managed us for a brief period of time, mm-hmm. and I don't remember where this was what uh, caused us to go elsewhere, but one of his ideas that didn't plan out, he wanted us to have band uniforms. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> for just airplane? Yeah. yeah. Now, I had just left the band uniform era, you know, back in Washington, D.C., but anyway, there you go. Pink tuxes. Yeah. What exactly. a funny direction that would have been, you know? Exactly. It's well, actually, it's too horrifying we did an album yeah. cover, I believe, where we all went retro back in, into the 50s with the white coats, you know, and the skinny ties and, and slick back hair and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so kind of just where we are today, you guys just put on a new record, um, Steady As She Goes, and you yes. played a few songs from that today. We played, yeah. Um, that was your first studio record in 20 years. Right. So what caused you guys to get back in the studio together? Well, I'm sure Jack has a take on this too, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's obviously one of the questions that we get when we do interviews because people wonder, what the heck took you so long? And when I look at it after the fact, uh, our last studio album was, uh, was for Epic and it was in 1990. Paradise Found, and then, you know, we Jack and I never quit playing. We kept on playing, and we sort of get sort of half-hearted artists uh, offers to do projects, and it just never seemed like the right thing. But also, I think, and just in terms of uh, of being in a in a good creative space, uh, just a number of things came together. A recording at Levon's place, Larry Campbell. I don't know if you know Larry, but he's a, he's a, a great guy. And a musical genius. It was Levon Helm's place. Just yeah, to reiterate yeah, that. Levon's uh, right where he does a midnight ramble, and just a lot of stuff. And it all came together. We, we we I did some co-writing with Jack and Larry, stuff I'd never really done before. It was all really exciting. We did the whole project in eleven days, including wow. the writing. And it was one of the, it was like just like a perfect storm of creativity. You know, it was painless. It was fun, and we got done with it. Whoa, check this out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And it just came out in April, so you guys it are did. still kind of promoting the release of it. Absolutely. And oh, absolutely. Playing new absolutely. material and all that. Um, do you have anything else lined up for the summer other than t- kind of touring? You guys playing some yeah, shows? Yeah, we've got, we've got a, a number of gigs, and, and, you know, since we're doing an interview, I should probably... Uh, plug it, yeah. <laughs> I should plug it, but I'm going to plug the website because that's where I'd have to go to find out about it, hottuna.com, and right. uh, we're doing a bunch of gigs over the summer. We're going to Italy later this summer. Cool. We go to yeah, it's the best. That's the best. I mean, I do it for nothing just because of the food, but <laughs> yeah. uh, but they do pay you to go also, so that's good. And, and they and know everything. I mean, it's interesting, and in, in, in some of the different countries we go to, they they know a lot of details about you, and, and they and they keep up with, with what you're doing. Italy's Italy's one of them. Really, I was but later ask. on in the in the year, we do our annual uh, trek to New York at, to the Beacon Theater. And we're doing two nights at the Beacon, and uh, we're going to have a great old time there in December, uh, and uh, a number of other. Will that things. be an acoustic? Uh, or that electric? will be electric. Yes, yeah, those, yeah. those, the we've tried acoustic there, and it. The, this is the, not a time for subtlety. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> right. the audience participation <laughs> is 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 rather uh, uh, brutal. Right. And, we need and to be so. able to pin their ears back. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you guys can do that. Oh very yes. Well. <laughs> Well, uh, thanks so much for stopping by and playing thanks the show today. It was you really bet. great Thank to meet you guys and talk thanks to you. Sense. And um, again, you guys at home, be sure to check out the session. Uh, it, was, it was really great. So thanks so much. Thank you. All right.